Hey, this is Mrs. Meckins. All right, for the last several lessons, we've been working on this idea of summarizing an author's ideas. We've talked about doing it in a couple different ways. One option is to paraphrase or retell a chunk of something the author put in the original text. We also talked about paraphrasing only works for small portions because we wouldn't want to retell a whole text in most cases. Okay. But then we learned about this idea in the last lesson of summarizing, actually just providing the highlights of a text, the most important information told in order, beginning, middle, and end. We did this with literature, stories, and we really focused in on just the most significant story elements. Okay, well now I want to introduce you to main idea. This is another way readers summarize author ideas. They can provide the main idea. Okay, so let's go back to our ESPN Sports Center uh, and sports analogy we've been using and remind each other that, okay, so the original text is like an original ball game. So if the original text is this big, the original ball game is two hours, then if you actually did a paraphrase or a retell, then you would be like the commentators on courtside saying every little thing that happened in order. And the, the original text and the paraphrase would be about the same length. Okay, in the last lesson, we talked about this idea of just the highlights, like the three minute sports center report compared to the two hour paraphrase. All right. So now it's time to talk about main idea. So what is main idea? Main idea is a summary of the summary. Yeah. Main idea is only one sentence long. Isn't that how it is on tests? Doesn't it say which sentence best describes the main idea of this passage? It's a sentence. Main idea is one sentence long. It's a summary of the summary. I mean, we're getting super. And I know at first glance, it's like, I only have to come up with the main idea. I only have to write one sentence, but talk about hard. Man, you thought the summary was, was hard. Leaving things out was hard. Now you gotta leave out even more information. If we go back to our sports analogy, this idea of the main idea would then become the single sentence newspaper headline. The same ball game that was two hours long yesterday, last night, was three minutes this morning on Sports Center, and one sentence in terms of the headline, one sentence in the newspaper. That's a main idea. Okay, so how do we do this? All right, you got this. In fact, I don't even really have to teach you anything new. We just need to tweak what we already know. We're only working on literature right now, okay, stories. We worked on summarizing stories. Now I wanna work on main idea of stories. We'll get to informational nonfiction texts here in the next couple lessons, but let's just stick with literature right now. You don't need any more information. You have what you need. Remember the somebody wanted but so then? It helped us take the whole novel and whittle it down to three or four sentences. And how long's the main idea? One sentence. So we just have to whittle this down. Remember, a main idea is a summary of the summary. We just have to whittle this down to one sentence. So I don't need to teach you anything new. I just have to teach you how to shorten that a little bit more. So I'm going to add this under main idea. When you're trying to figure out the main idea of story, of literature, you're going to use somebody wanted but so then. You just, you just need to say it so efficiently that it's only one sentence. Because when we were working on this frame in the last lesson, we weren't keeping it to one sentence. In fact, most of these items each had their own sentence. And it ended up being, what, three, four sentences, five sentences long. Now I got to that even more to get it down to one sentence. Okay, so when I say main idea of a story, literature is SWBS, and you're like, what's that? I'm gonna put an arrow because it's this thing. You already know it, but I put a period there because now you gotta be able to say that information even more succinctly, all right? Again, it's only one sentence. You only have to write one sentence, but I 
only get to write one sentence? I have to say it all only in one sentence? Yeah, more complex, harder to do. Okay, so let's again look at some examples um, from our previous lesson in terms of the summary. Remember when I used this and, and we came up with, um, oh, I think I did like Cinderella and I did Little Red Riding Hood and I did a couple examples using this, okay? Well, I want to go back to those simple examples. Let's start simple and then we'll, we'll raise the rigor, but let's start simple. Okay, so on your screen, I have a summary typed up of Cinderella. Let's look at that. Okay, Cinderella wanted to go to the ball, but her evil stepmother wouldn't allow her to go until she finished all of her chores. Do you see how much, that's that was like a thought right there, right? So her fairy godmother showed up, used magic, helped her finish her chores, get a dress, get glass slippers, get a coach. There's a lot of detail in there, but it's a summary. It makes sense that we highlight the important details because a summary is multiple sentences. It's just a handful, but it is multiple sentences. Then we got to get to the to the resolution. Then she met her Prince Charming at the ball and they lived happily ever after. Okay, so now look, look to the right of that because now using only one period. Oh, it's a, it's a complex sentence, but it is not a run-on, people. We are not going to generate run-ons. We're going to use punctuation, and we're going to use correct sentence structure, and by golly, we're going to write one long compound complex sentence, but it's only going to be one, because remember, main idea, one sentence summaries. All right, so I want to convey the plot as fast as I can. So I use the details from the summary. And I start to kind of identify, I want to keep this, I need this, I need this, I need this, but I'm going to lose some of the adjectives. I'm going to lose some of the, the details and prepositional phrases. I'm going to lose some of the excess. I just need the core of the somebody wanted, but so then. So listen to how it sounds. Cinderella wanted to go to the ball, but her stepmother wouldn't allow it. So her fairy godmother helped her. Then she met her Prince Charming. Boom. Did it. Did it. Let's look at another one. Little Red Riding Hood. Remember when I did this one in the previous lesson? And I did it kind of in the long, not long really, but the summary version, okay? So let's recap the summary version. Little Red Riding Hood wanted to take cookies to her sick grandmother, but she encountered a wolf pretending to be her grandmother lying in her bed. So she questioned the wolf's eyes and ears and nose before running for help. Then a woodsman heard her crying, saved her from the wolf, and she was reunited with her grandmother. Okay. That is a great summary, but at some point we have to be able to whittle that down to a single sentence main idea. Everything you need is in there, but you have more than you need. You have to edit it out. You've got to let go of even more details, adjectives, little phrases that you just don't need for the core of somebody wanted, but so then. Here we go. Little Red Riding Hood wanted to take cookies to her grandmother, but she encountered a wolf, so she ran away. Then a woodsman saved her. Boom. Did it. I left out some things. You're right. But this is the main idea. Okay. So, a baker's dozen. Remember that legend? All the way back to the first series, and then we talked about it again just in the last lesson. Okay. In the last lesson, we worked together to summarize this. And we drafted our somebody wanted, but so then, all right? So I cleaned it up, typed it up, and there it is on your screen. Let's read this version. This is the summary. Multiple sentences, but only a handful. Here we go. A bakery owner wanted to run a successful and profitable business, but an ugly old woman put a spell on him when he didn't give her 13 cookies when she'd asked for a dozen. So after many bad batches of baking, St. Nicholas appeared to the baker and reminded him to be more generous to others. Then when the old woman appeared again, he gave her 13 cookies and forever defined a baker's dozen to mean 13. Okay, so we've got to do this, you guys. We've got to figure out how to cut, what to cut, and, and get it stripped down to one sentence. We're still going to use the, the words wanted, but so then. We still want to use that because we still want um, the notion of plot. 
We want the main idea to have a character who had a problem that got solved. We still need that rhythm. Okay, so that said, I want to show you, um, you can just look at it. Some of us can just look at that and start doing it. You got it. But for others, we're like, oh, where do I start? I don't know how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to show you my trick. And it gives you kind of a baby step in between going just from the summary to ba-bam, main idea, one sentence. Okay, and the trick is that you do the full-blown somebody wanted, but so then. You do it, and then you cut out, you, you edit out before you try to write the main idea. You, you read it and you figure out, okay, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't, and we literally start to cross things off. Okay, so a bakery owner wanted to run a successful and profitable business. You know what? He wanted to run a business. I don't need successful and pro profitable because most people, when they run a business, who wouldn't want it to be successful and profitable, right? I'm looking to strip things out that I don't need. Excess words. See how I did that? I just cut it out. Okay, so help me with this next one. But an ugly old woman put a spell on him when he didn't give her 13 cookies when she'd asked for a dozen. Okay, let's just chip away at this. But an ugly old woman. Do we need all of that? We need some of it. What do we need? Woman. Okay. But a woman. Maybe old woman. Okay. But hey, I'm trying to be stingy with my words here. Okay. But a woman put a spell on him. Do we need all that? Is it essential? It is. Yeah, we better keep all that. When he didn't give her 13 cookies when she'd asked for a dozen. Okay, I'm positive we can say this in less words. A woman put a spell on him. What could you cut? Or, or how could you start to tweak the sentence structure a little bit to get that down to a few less words? Let's look at that. Kind of thoughts? Put a spell on him. When he only gave her 12 cookies, okay? So you're, you're kind of flipping it around. When he only gave her 12 cookies for a dozen. Okay, we could do that. Some of you might say, I think we need all of it. Ms. Meckins, do you have to cut? No. You don't have to cut everything or a lot from everything, maybe just a little bit. Okay, let's move on. Let's see. Can you cut from this one? So after many bad batches of baking, St. Nicholas appeared to the baker and reminded him to be more generous to others. All right, again, let's chip away. So after many bad batches of baking, St. Nicholas appeared to the baker. All right, let's stop there. So remember, the so is how he fixed his problem. After many bad batches, is that how we fixed his problem? No. Can I cut it? Yeah. You can cut it in terms of the main idea. It's just a detail about how we got to the climax. So St. Nicholas appeared to the baker and reminded him to be more generous to others. St. Nicholas appeared to the baker. Do we need to the baker? Maybe. If it's the baker's problem though, we assume, we can presume it's to the baker. St. Nicholas appeared and reminded him, what could you cut? He reminded him what? To be more generous. Yeah, we don't need to others. Isn't that obvious too? Boom, we could end it right there and end that part right there. Okay, now last sentence or last part of the summary, we haven't even gotten to the main idea yet. Here we go. Then when the old woman appeared again, he gave her 13 cookies and forever defined a baker's dozen to mean 13. Okay, all of it happened. We've already summarized it rather succinctly, but I'm just looking. Can you cut any of it? We've got to whittle this down. What are you thinking? What if you said then, remember you want to keep then, then the next time. No, not, not the next time when the old woman appeared. Just the next time he gave, instead of her, the old woman or the woman. 
he gave the woman 13 cookies and forever define. Okay, well, wait a minute. We need to keep this idea of a baker's dozen. We need to keep the idea that it means 13. What if he gave the woman a baker's dozen? Right? What if he gave the woman, what if we said then the next time he gave the woman a baker's dozen? Maybe use one of those long dashes called an M dash, 13 cookies. Do you see how I'm like cutting and I'm moving and I'm splicing things around? That's normal. We got to get this down. Okay, so if I wrote this all out, my main idea might be, and, and, and I won't necessarily write it right here, but I'm going to say it in a sentence and I'm going to use my punctuation so you know it's truly one sentence. You'll hear period once, but I'm not writing a run on. All right, watch this. A bakery owner wanted to run a business, comma, because that's a complete thought. So now that's a sentence, but that's a conjunction, but... A woman put a spell on him when he didn't give her 13 cookies when she'd asked for a dozen and, and, and comma. So we're connecting it again. So that's a con conjunction. So lowercase s, St. Nicholas appeared and reminded him to be more generous. Semicolon. Then the next time he gave the woman a baker's dozen dash 13 cookies. You see it? Yeah, that's one sentence. One long sentence, but it's a sentence. What we're learning to do in this lesson is summarize our summary. We're trying to get a story, an original story, literature, down to one sentence that gives us character with problem and solution. Boom. You could probably cut even more from the sample we generated together. You could probably take out what he wanted. A bakery owner um, ha had a spell put on him by a woman. Uh, so, and then he gave her 13. Maybe we don't need the motivation, the wanted. But just this idea of whittling it down a little more, a little more, a little more. So it's a single sentence, a single long sentence. Okay. If you were in Mrs. Smekin's class right now, here's what I would ask you to do. On your screen, there's the carpet fitter again. Now, I know you did the carpet fitter as a previous lesson assignment, perhaps, where you already did the somebody wanted, but so good. You got that done. All right. If you haven't, then do that. Read and write the summary using the frame somebody wanted, but so then. Then I want you to cut, 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 cut and get that sucker down to one sentence main idea. All right. Then I want you to do a second one because readers have to be able to read a passage and do the main idea like in one sitting. So if you've already read the carpet fitter, you read the carpet fitter and then on another day you did the, the summary. OK, and now you're doing the main idea. Come on, you guys, let's raise the rigor here. Let's let's up the challenge a little bit. So I'm going to give you another passage. All right. This is another legend. It's called the Yellow Ribbon. You haven't read it yet. So it's a brand new passage for you. I want you to read this passage and I want you to give me the main idea. Now, if you need to read the Yellow Ribbon, do somebody want it? But so then to cut and get down to one sentence main idea. Oh, that's fine. No problem. But I challenge you to see if you can read the yellow ribbon, previous page, think about somebody wanted but so then, but only write the one sentence main idea. Because that's what you have to be able to do on a test. Read this big honk of thing and then tell it to me in a sentence. Yeah. So let's see if you can do it. If you need two steps, do it in two steps. Otherwise, give it to me in one. So all you're doing as your task is writing a one sentence main idea for yellow ribbon and a one sentence main idea for carpet fitter. Your task is to write two sentences, but I'm telling you what, they're going to be hard two sentences to come up with. If you were in Mrs. Smackin's class, that's what you'd be doing, but your teacher might have a better idea.